Uh, yes. So, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Konrad Sobchuk, and I will speak a little bit about the, uh, let's say, photocatalysts uh, doped with cobalt today, especially with cobalt. And I will compare how different methods of implementation the cobalt inside of the titanium dioxide influence its photocatalytic photo activity. And I hope this will work. Oh no, I, I need to use that. Okay, so um, hmm, one second, because it was the slide change. Um, this, yeah, okay, okay, now it works. Okay, uh, so I will start with the overview of the what is a photocatalyst and what is a photocatalyst. And uh, basically, I would uh, use the band theory of the materials to explain that. So, in terms of, in this theory, materials can be divided onto uh, insulators uh, and uh, uh, insulators and uh, conductors and half conductors. And basically, titanium dioxide will be half conductor, half insulator, and that depends on the uh, range of, of the value of the energy band gap. So uh, conductors won't be having a large band gap. In fact, they, you know, two uh, bands, meaning valence band and conduction band will be on uh, connected in conduct uh, conductors. In terms of semiconductors, we have only, you know, a small gap and uh, different literature sources define differently how much the gap could be. However, basically for our consideration, it would be something which uh, sm a gap small enough to be uh, for the electrons from valence bands to be excited by the light source. And uh, insulators will have this gap very large, so it will be very difficult for the electron to be excited from this state to the conduction bit. And basically that's the uh, main, let's say, uh, goal of the photocatalysis. So basically in, uh, to uh, excite electrons from valence band onto conduction band and uh, in this uh, manner create two uh, different charges. First, the electron which has been moved and then the hole uh, which is uh, positively charged, which is left behind. And when we put when there is a, a voltage in the system, obviously both of those charges can be moved around and therefore it can be very helpful. And then it could be used in the reduction because as my, uh, let's say, uh, my presentation uh, title said, uh, this photocatalysis uh, it will be described mainly in terms of how it affects the reduction of CO2 because CO2, uh, well, anthropological CO2 tends to be a big problem in nowadays society, and therefore we want to uh, have uh, some systems of storage or utilization even for the CO2. And basically one of the abilities of the photocatalytic materials is to reduce the CO2 to something different. Mm -hmm. I will be speaking mostly about methane, carbon monoxide and methane. However, all the researchers and all the systems can also produce methanol, ethanol and other valuable chemicals. So basically that's the main goal of our of my talk right now. However, obviously, as you can see, there are many other different uh, positives in terms of how can we use titanium dioxide and other photocatalytic uh, materials. So uh, why titanium dioxide? Basically because, uh, well, currently it's um, one of the most popular uh, photocatalysts uh, in terms of use because of the let's say, of modification. However, also in our case right now, uh, Mangeli, uh, the, let's say, uh, the occurrence, the, 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 the possibility of having Mangeli phases, so something which is halfly reduced already, is very, uh, let's say, beneficial for the reduction process. Because basically reduction is you know, absorbing electrons, taking the electrons. And basically this halfly reduced state really uh, 
allows to for the electrons to be trapped inside and then uh, given to the CO2 molecule, which, by the way, is very difficult to be reduced because of the double bondings. Uh, and uh, I will probably show it uh, later in terms of experimental part. Obviously, when in regards to titanium dioxide, we have three uh, Phase, a free possible, let's say, crystallographic structure. So we can have a, a root pile anatas or brookit. And this uh, handy graph shows the differences in terms of conduction and valence band between them. So basically, uh, the they are different in terms of their valence band. However, uh, the gap uh, between the energy gap between the, those bands is not the, uh, let's say, only important thing uh, to consider, because obviously the lower the gap, the, the easier it is uh, to move the electrons from the valence band to the electron bands. However, also, as we can see, uh, there is uh, there are differences in terms of how many pathways there are available for the electrons to uh, travel. So, for example, Anatas and Brook, it tends to be uh, easier to work with in terms of be, they just simply have much more available uh, possibilities in terms of where the electron can be placed. However, also the size of a crystallite really is important. So, for example, Anatas, even though it has, uh, by the literature, a uh, higher band gap, it tends to be better photocatalysts, uh, uh, photocatalyst because it tends to do uh, to form smaller crystallites and also it has more pathways. But now let's maybe go to my, uh, you know, experimental processes. So basically all the samples that I will be talking about today are on the, well, created using the Zolgel method uh, with the hydrolysis of uh, uh, titanium for isopropoxide. And uh, what, uh, and we have different kinds of uh, the preparation method. So basically, uh, this graph shows basically that if we uh, use the reactor, microwave reactor and solvothermal method, the designation for the sample will, will be just air. And then if we use furnace, it will be designation F. And also I did both of them. So a reactor and then furnace. And that's the first part of this talk, so how that, uh, you know, those different methods affect the cobalt implement implementation. That's just the visual, how the samples look like. And uh, we see that actually tech, uh, implementing of, of cobalt to the titanium dioxide doesn't really allow for the titanium dioxide to stay white uh, because generally it's, uh, the photocatalyst it should be as uh, bright as possible. However, there is also a plus side to this because since it become colorful, it uh, has uh, its, let's say, absorption bent more in the visible range and therefore that would be also very useful because basically lower uh, energy light can be uh, used to, you know, excite the electrons from the valence band uh, to conduction band and therefore it will uh, therefore better for the, let's say, from the sustainability standpoint, because we don't need to use very high, uh, strong light to excite those electrons. Uh, this is the first part. So uh, how the bed uh, surface area and how the some images look for those samples. And I would uh, just want to uh, focus on, on the bed differences, meaning that the reactor uh, does tend to uh, leave the surface area bigger than the furnace. So what really is striking that all the furnace, simple furnace uh, samples do have very low uh, bed surface area. And those that have undergone both reactor treatment and furnace doesn't have that such a low uh, surface area. And obviously the bigger the surface area, generally speaking, obviously there are uh, different you know, uh, possibilities to, to, to have exceptions. However, as a general rule, the higher the bed surface area, there will be a, let's say, higher possibility of uh, photo, uh, photocatalysis because obviously a photocatalysis as any other catalysis will be, uh, you know, undergoing in the places where the uh, there is 
too much energy in some place. And uh, obviously, the more surface, the more possibility of those uh, of those happening. So uh, basically, that graph, I think, shows that uh, reactor treatment or reactor and then furnace is much better than just uh, than just furnace. However, uh, and that's to, let's say, prove uh, that the uh, XRD uh, patterns doesn't really show that they change much between each other. So basically all of those samples are mainly NFS and mainly, I, I, I will say, over 92%. Uh, so only, is, let's say, 5% up to 5% of the crystallic phase will be uh, some uh, uh, some capacity brookage. And for the furnace, also uh, tends, uh, in the furnace samples, we also tend to have some of the rutile phase. And in terms of crystallite size, we also can see that uh, the implementation of cobalt will raise the crystallite size, obviously, because the lattice will be, the crystallic lattice will be spread out because of the, you know, foreign atom, which is cobalt in this case. Uh, but we see again that for the furnace sample, the, let's say this, uh, this array of the uh, lattice is much bigger than for the both reactor or reactor and fence. So from that standpoint, I would say a very like uh, in quotation that reactor allows to preserve the, let's say the, 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 the size of the crystallites in terms for the future, let's say modification. And that, therefore I would say that this is very significant, uh, significant step to, to do for the samples. But the most important thing is actually photo reduction. So taking CO2 and redu reducing it, and uh, we used this system to do so. So it's a glass reactor. And uh, in this glass reactor, we have a UV lamp, uh, which has a maximum uh, emittance at uh, three, six, five nanometers. And uh, we are using for those experiments UVC radiation, but it also works on the UV uh, vis radiation. However, just the results are slightly lower. And then uh, basically, the inside of the bottle is uh, saturated with CO2 and the lamp uh, and the photocatalyst is, actually I will show the next slide maybe, uh, how it looks in real life. So uh, we use those glass fiber strips and we are painting the sample onto them and they are placed, as you can see, in the reactor. And uh, the lamp, UV lamp, is shining and because the inside is saturated with CO2, uh, we are, uh, the reaction basically goes uh, there. And also uh, here is the sampling point. So you can see it here on the graph. And uh, in order to establish what happened inside of the reactor and how much of the product is inside and what product, uh, we are basically using gas chromatography uh, because those are basic reduction, uh, reactions, how the certain uh, products came to be in this whole process. So how the hydrogen as a water splitting uh, matter, you know, is obtained CO2 and methane, but regarding the gas uh, chromatography, we used this uh, gas chromatograph. So master G is C and basically the sample one microliter from the reactor is, you know, uh, injected to the uh, gas chromatograph. And then we have two detectors, one for uh, hydrogen and second for CO and, uh, and methane. And uh, by obtaining uh, chromatographs, we can then, you know, uh, int uh, integrate how much of certain products there is, and that can allow to create those uh, graphs. So what, how the photocatalytic, let's say, activity and how the, uh, uh, by how much product of certain kind there is in our uh, system. So uh, here you can see which type of uh, product I'm speaking about right now. And those are those three samples that I 
was talking about. And again, we can see the same trend, of, uh, but here slightly in slightly different, uh, let's say, uh, change. So we see that React uh, surprisingly is the lowest uh, than the than the uh, just furnace. However, the biggest uh, photocatalytic activity is for again reactor and furnace. And the same thing goes for CO, so for carbon monoxide. The same tendency is uh, achieved there, uh, even though we see that, uh, you know, just one modification really tends to be very similar. And then uh, for the methane, the same thing. But in our, uh, let's say, uh, in our research, we did also see that uh, adding of ammonia does actually decrease the photocatalytic catalytic activity, does decrease how much of the product is obtained. And both, all of those three samples were obtained using uh, ammonia water. So basically, we done another batch of samples and another, uh, but before that, I also will speak a little bit about cyclic voltammetry measurements because basically those photocatalysts also should be, well, let's say good for photoelectrocatalysis. Uh, so uh, CV measurements and then photopoles in the next slide uh, were taken. And basically the changes are as following. So basically the best photocatalyst as uh, I was speaking, so RR does have this, uh, part different from uh, others. And also those are two kinds of uh, cyclic voltammetry. So on the left, we have dark conditions. So without any uh, light, you know, shining on the sample and those are light conditions. So we see like immediately maybe that uh, in dark conditions, this part is much lower than for the light conditions. So basically, when we are uh, adding light to the system, uh, the graph stretches out vertically, and uh, that's uh, very important. Uh, but uh, the different main difference why the photocatalyst uh, RF is better, I would say it's because of that. So because the potential, uh, let's say, uh, there is bigger current in lower potential, that just assists the reduction, which is correlated with uh, uh, taking up the, the electrons. And also uh, different, uh, that's just the um, comparison between dark and light for the best photocatalyst. So we see that this part doesn't really change, but because uh, the dink light stretches it vertically, you know, stretches it uh, quite significantly. And that's also why there is a, high, a higher pot potential in the light condition. However, also in terms of photopulse me measurement, photopulse meaning the sample was polarized uh, as an electrode, and then uh, I changed the uh, per periodically light and no light, so switch on, switch off, uh, and how it affects the current going through the sample and we see that the best sample is very regular in terms or in comparison to other uh, samples. So I would say that also regularity and uh, let's say um, the ability of the sample to be, uh, let's say, to add and uh, give electrons quite uh, efficiently is very, uh, is correlated positively with, with the how good it will perform as a photocatalyst. But also I said earlier, I mentioned earlier that ammonia water does decrease the photocatalytic activity. So I proposed the other samples as well. And since my project does, uh, let's say, involve synergistic, uh, uh, synergistic, uh, uh, let's say, contraplay uh, be between metals and non-metals, we also added carbon as a non-metal uh, to the system, which basically was meant to reduce slightly the uh, cobalt and then uh, cobalt in reduced states should perform better. And actually it does perform better because we see that's again, the best photocatalyst from the previous batch. And uh, those three that I'm presenting now are even better. In terms of uh, just implementing cobalt, so without uh, without the ammonia water, we see that we can raise, well, let's say two times the photocatalytic activity, but 
adding carbon raises it even more because that's the best photocatalysis from this batch that uh, photocatalysis from this batch that I, that I obtained and we see that there is a difference a different ratio between uh, cobalt and uh, and carbon inside so that also will say that it doesn't the synergistic effect is uh, let's say uh, dependent on how much and in what proportion and what balance is metal to non-metal and from this standpoint I would say that more metal less non-metal is uh, desirable and also this tendency is the same for carbon monoxide because that was for hydrogen uh, for carbon monoxide, because cobalt is very, uh, let's say, selective towards CO. So basically, all the samples with CO, uh, with cobalt, does, you know, tend to perform better in terms of CO. So we see that they are similar in this case. So there is no, let's say, huge differences between them. However, also, the same sample as before was the best one. And the same thing goes, for, uh, well, it's like, uh, almost the same thing goes for methane. So we see that actually more carbon we introduce to the system, it does, uh, let's say, imply to be more selective towards, uh, towards methane. And uh, so that's, and also let's recognize that difference be between the, the ammonia one and the, all those without ammonia is uh, quite significant. In terms of XRD patterns, I wanted to just mention that in our, uh, let's say, doubly uh, impregnated uh, sample, so with, the, with car both carbon and uh, cobalt, we don't really see that heavily the cobalt uh, particles, the metallic cobalt, because basically uh, we impregnated the sample with this uh, substance called red ACO2, and by that's basically uh, cobalt uh, nitrate mixed with carbon in the right balance, and then annealed in 600 degrees in the furnace. And the XRD pattern of that is as follows, which basically proves that there is a uh, metallic cobalt inside, so something that we desired. However, in after impregnation, this cobalt either is too, let's say, it's too, uh, we have too, too, too low concentration of cobalt to be detected by the XRD, or it actually oxidizes in terms uh, uh, during the, the, the reaction. Uh, but uh, either case, we see that also the crystalline size is raised by adding this additive. And in terms of cyclic voltammetry uh, and uh, then photopulse measurements, we see also that uh, this uh, trend, uh, which we see in for uh, both hydrogen and carbon monoxide is uh, present here as well. So two uh, best samples. So in terms of this uh, sample, which had the, let's say, synergistic effect and more metal is the highest one. We can see the gold here and also in the light, uh, let's say, version even clearer, I would say. And then, uh, so basically the shape or I, I should say how low and how high, so how vertically stretched the, the sample is correlates basically with how how good it performed for hydrogen and carbon uh, monoxide. And in terms of uh, photopoles, we see that basically all of them perform quite, uh, I would say, good. However, uh, so they're, they're all very repeatable in the pattern. However, the best one, so the golden one, we see that it uh, tends to be more, let's say, uh, stable when uh, the light is on, because basically here, th this section is light turned off, then the turning on of the lamp is here. Then we see here light, then off, light, off, light, off. So basically we see uh, how the pattern really changes. And then uh, we see that compared to the blue one or for, uh, to the green one, 
the gold one tends to be and as well the 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 uh, other uh, let's say which has been uh, which has been um, which has been good for the photocatalysis tend to be more stable so i would say that those are the uh, results. So basically, the summary, depending on the thermal uh, uh, implementation method of the cobalt, we can obtain different sample, uh, different performing samples. And basically, the more steps this, uh, the sample undergoes, the better it is, I would say. So both reactors over thermal method and then the, the furnace. And also, uh, we would uh, want to not use ammonia water and impregnation is uh, of the, let's say, um, metal, non-metal compound is better than just metal or just non-metal. So, uh, and that uh, re research was uh, partially funded from this wonderful uh, thing. And I thank you very much for your.